Today we're going to continue to look at the Warrior poses. Last week we looked at Warrior 1, and today we're going to look at Warrior 2. Now from this Warrior's perspective and Warrior 2, we're looking at the hero's integrity, their strength, the things they can do to change their life for the better and with that integrity. healing from a bad relationship, cutting those energy ties to a partner that we've broken up with. But what if we want to break up with an aspect of self that is harming us, a toxic emotion that we keep playing into, a bad habit, or even maybe the thing isn't even intrinsically bad or harmful in any way, but it's just not supporting us anymore, and we need to break up with it. So what I want you to do is when we're looking at doing a cord cutting ceremony, we need to reconnect with ourselves. We need to take the self-inquiry, a good hard look at the truth of who we are. And we can do that by grabbing a journal, working through some self-reflection. In doing that, we want to take that, um, that toxic emotion, that bad habit, that thing that isn't supporting us anymore, and we want to write about it. We want to write about the dark parts of it. What is it robbing us of? What is it taking from us? What does that look like in our life? Be honest here. You're not hiding from anybody but yourself and your ability self-care and your self-work. So write out the ugly parts of it. Read it as your story to yourself. And then start to bridge the gap into that vision of what would your life look like if you didn't play into this toxic emotion anymore, if you didn't give in to this bad habit, if you had the strength to stop doing something that's no longer supporting you, what would that self-care look like? would it manifest? And as you're looking at how it would manifest, the good parts of breaking up with this habit, this emotion, this thing, start to feel the energy, the emotions that are positive that would come about from releasing it. And what we're going to do today after, you know, this is assuming that you've paused this video and you've sat down and you've really taken some time to write in your journal and to do the work of what you're going to do in this pose because you already have to have the journal work done. Or maybe if you don't like to write in a journal, just sitting and meditating on it and really thinking about what it's robbing from you and what you could come out on the other side and have on the other way. And then we're going to, in this pose, imagine as we're moving through the variations of Warrior Two pose, we're going to imagine cutting those cords. So what I want to do is give you kind of a specific example. What really kind of got me thinking about this this week is I've been reading this book called The Illumination Process. And it's really about transforming toxic emotions with wisdom, with power, with grace. It says right on the front cover. And as I was going through the book, what it really gets into is what most people know as the seven deadly sins and the seven noble truths. But don't get all bogged down in the religious aspects of those things. In fact, in the book, he calls them our seven demons and our seven angels. But no matter what your belief system, if you look at these things as, you know, things that don't serve us and ways of living that do, we all are part, we, we all practice the seven on both sides. Some varying degree. And as I was going through the book, I noticed that like the more I highlight a chapter was probably an indication that those are ones I needed to work on more. Now I highlight it in every chapter, if I'm being honest with myself. But one of the ones that really spoke to me, I mean, in our day and age, is gluttony. And the opposite of gluttony, he has in here as 
And I just want to read because I think that it, it's kind of appropriate to, to a lot of different things. And, and I want to give you a very specific example of something, things to think about as you're trying to journal. And here he says, the angel of temperance banishes the demon of gluttony. And temperance, he tells you, he doesn't want you to think about temperance as this rigid and unwillingness to um, experience any kind of pleasure or joy. That's not what it's about. And here it's practicing moderation, taking only what you need, exercising self-restraint, maybe in the face of temptation to overindulge, the most common. But what about squandering your energy, overworking? I mean, that's a form of gluttony if you think about it. When we overwork, we squander our energy, we give up too much of ourselves. It doesn't sound like something that's bad. We're helping somebody else. We're working hard to provide for our family. But if it's taking from our own self-care, then it is a form of gluttony. Maybe you overloaded your credit card. I know that comp feels like it falls more under greed, but in a way, it's gluttony. It's taking more than what we need. Maybe you fail to recognize when the party stopped being fun and you stayed too long. At a detriment to yourself, maybe your own mental, like, you know, you, you get into a party and the emotions of people around you and the conversations have worn on you and you needed to take a break sooner. It's recognizing that, that line of where giving for others takes away from our own self-care. And in doing, in practicing this, what do we get? Let's look at the other side. We get back our creativity, more sustainable ways to operate in our life. It frees you to start thinking about what you'll leave, not just to future generations, but what you can accumulate today for yourself, because you have to support yourself before you can take care of others. And that's really part of the strength and integrity that a warrior is operating out of. A warrior is fighting for other people, but a warrior has nothing to give if he's not caring for himself. So these would be the things that I would probably, if I was journaling, to give you an example, that I would be writing about the bad parts and the good parts. I don't like using those terms intrinsically because of all their connotations and deconnotations to them, but... Um, just, you know, provide a frame of thought. You know, I would be looking at gluttony because, you know, those cravings for food, to overindulge, to party, that every party, every celebration has to revolve around food is something that I was raised with, something that most of us were raised with. But they're not intrinsically bad. I have wonderful memories. But I'm trying to support myself by eating healthier food and moderating the bad ones. So that's what I would be journaling about, and that's what I would be doing as I work this post today. So the first thing you want to have when you're doing a course, like to gather your mat support supplies, and again, none of them necessary, but a black candle will support you. Now you can dress it with an oil, like tobacco or sage. My um, black candle happens to already be a tobacco one. That's, again, something that clears energy for so I'm going to light that to give myself energy before I start my practice. Now again, we have a candle lit and we're going yoga, so we want to make sure that that candle's a nice distance from our mat, a nice safe distance that we don't bump into it. I also thought that it would be great to have a raw kind of quartz, something that really clears the energy, balances the chakras. This one is something I got this week. It's such a nice... Um, of raw calcite actually that has raw quartz on it. So I brought that to use to support me. And then I have my sage and Palo Santo because after we do the pose, we're going to clear and we're going to need them here to utilize. So let's look at the pose and how we can envision this cord cutting as we're doing it. So again, this is a standing pose. It's going to be very similar with only two differences as far as hip and foot and arm, well, and arm, so I guess three, to that warrior one. So we want to get that nice foundation. We want to stand up, and we want to have our feet about hip distance apart, a little wider stance if you need it. So 
your balance and you know maybe wiggle the toes kind of widen the toes maybe rock a little bit on your feet really get that nice foundation make sure you're standing up nice and tall shoulders rolled back so that we feel supported our body feels supported before we step back now remember that when in warrior one last week as we step back we could make this harder or easier based on our stance. So the little bit wider our feet are, the little closer our feet are, the easier this pose gets. The closer our feet are, you know, hip distance apart. You don't want them directly behind each other. And the wider our stance, the harder this gets. I can already feel the thigh muscles engaging and supporting me. Now in warrior one, we have that back toe pointed to the front corner of the mat and we had our hips forward. To change this into warrior two, we're gonna turn that back toe to the side of our mat and in doing so, our hips came to the side of the mat as well. So this is the difference in the stance. Toe going to the side of the mat, hip going to the side of the mat. We're going to go ahead then and bend this knee. Again, we want that knee to be right over the ankle. We don't want it leaning too far forward or back and, and, you know, hurting the other muscles. We want the support in this pose of that knee being over the ankle as best as you can accomplish and feel comfortable. So maybe here you need to play with this. You need to walk the foot out or walk the foot in to feel now that we're in this bottom part of the pose, we have this stance. So let's look at the arms. We can start with the arms from our hips and what we're going to do is take the arms straight up this time so that they're parallel to the mat. And usually if we're doing this full warrior pose, our gaze is over this front stance. So let's look at the movement because what we're gonna do, we wanna move our arms, work with breath to cut these cords. So we have what's called reverse warrior. We drop the back hand and it just kind of rests against the back of our thigh we turn the palm over and we take the hand up and overhead. Now you can do this from any angles. You want to gaze at your hand. It can be out if that's comfortable. It can be straight up. You can even start to come back into the pose, but you're going to follow the hand with your gaze in this reverse warrior. Now from here, we're going to come forward. Now if we're doing this fully, we're going to come forward and we're going to kind of lay the forearm against the thigh, bring that back hand up and over. Again, our gaze is to the hand at the top. Now, if this is too much to do, again, you can even, like, you could leave this arm back for now and just lift this up a little bit. When you come forward, you could just place this hand against the leg and maybe raise this one out. These don't need to be these huge exaggerated movements I'm doing. Find what's comfortable for you. And remember that you could be doing warrior sitting in a chair. I could be literally sitting in a chair right now with one leg out and one leg to the side and doing the arm movements as much as is comfortable for me. Now the third one that we can look at is to reverse. Now when we reverse this, again, you wanna make sure you're always up nice and straight, and we are just going to turn the arm and rotate at the waist, and come back. So now I hope you can see in these that we have all these different chopping motions. Our arms are going all different ways. And we can move them with breath, and at the same time, envision that we have these cords to the emotion or the bad habit that you're going to get rid of. So to use my example of gluttony and overindulgence in foods that aren't supporting me nutritionally, I can imagine, you know, there's a coconut cream pie over here. <laughs> One of my cravings. I can imagine that there's, you know, some, I like these buffalo covered pretzel things that they're over here. And I have these imaginary cords connecting me energetically to these foods that I want to get rid of. Now, go 
follow with me. I know my example may seem silly, and yours can be very different. But it's easy to understand. We all have attachments to foods that are empty calories that don't support us nutritionally. And I have these cords. So I'm coming into my warrior. I'm standing here, and I'm building up. I'm raising up, and I'm building up my, my courage, my integrity, my strength. And as I inhale, I'm going to chop as I bring this arm down, one of those cords. Turn this palm and chop as I bring this arm up. And then as I need to exhale, chopping again with this arm, bringing it down, chopping again, bringing this arm up. And coming back, raising up again, finding that courage, that strength, that integrity. And again, I'm going to rotate and I'm going to chop these cords as I rotate and chop and come back. Now, one thing nice about Warrior Two is we can just turn that front foot to the side and turn that back foot to the back of the mat. And we are now in the stance to do Warrior Two on this side. Bringing up and so that we have more places to chop. We're going to inhale and chop. Exhale and chop. Coming back, building strength and confidence. And we're going to inhale up nice and tall and exhale and rotate. And coming back. Now, again, if all these arm movements seem too much, when you're in this pose, you could simply take the arms gently, chop, chop around your body, chop around just the movement, like a dance. Think of it as gentle and serene. It doesn't have to be a big thing. We're just slicing through these energy cords that are around us. And maybe that's the way you want to warm up. Chopping gently, slowly, before you come into Warrior. And then do whatever version of this pose you want to do as you're chopping. But now that we've chopped, this energy, we need to clear the area. Going back to when you first were journaling and you were looking at those dark emotions, and we've done this chopping, we've probably left some of that energy around from those cords and releasing them. So we want to come and we want to get sage or palo santo, tobacco, whatever it is that you want to burn. And after you get it going so that you see the smoke coming from it, we're going to take and clean the space. Clear it out energetically all around you. Over your head, circling around the body, all the way down around. We're cleansing so that we can come up with those positive emotions. So we can come out on the other side and support that warrior in us so that we can live a life with more integrity, whichever thing we've done. You know, what would be like oh, one thing I want to do this week? I'm challenging myself, so I'm challenging you. If you don't have a book, if you don't want to buy this book and read this book, look up. Seven Deadly Sins and the Seven no Noble Truths. Again, ignore whatever your religious beliefs are. Get rid of that. Shed that. Whatever religious beliefs you have or you've gotten rid of, whatever, wherever you are, get rid of the connotations around the world, the words, and see them clearly. Look at those seven demons, those seven angels, whatever you feel comfortable calling them, and journal on each one. And after each one, come up and do this warrior pose. And cut through. Do this whole ceremony for every single one of them. And see how your week proceeds after that. When you've really taken time to journal, to move, to practice, to envision. And come out on the other side with your heroes or warriors integrity. The strength and the confidence. Take care of yourself. That's the only way you're going to be able to do 
take care of others. I want to thank you for being here with me today. Um, I don't know, this practice felt really, really good for me to cut and get rid of um, something that I have been working on cutting more and more out of my life. Again, thank you for being here.